All right, so this lead code question is called valid parentheses. It says, given a string containing just the characters, open parentheses, close parentheses, open curly brace, close curly brace, open square bracket and close square bracket, determine if the input string is valid. An input string is valid if open brackets must be closed by the same type of brackets and open brackets must be closed in the correct order. Note that an empty string is also considered valid. So they give us a couple examples, input, open parentheses, followed by closing parentheses. That is true. Next example, open parentheses, close parentheses, open square bracket, close square bracket, open curly brace, close curly brace. That's also true. Next one, open parentheses, close square bracket. That's false because you don't have anything closing the parentheses and you don't have anything opening the square brackets. Example four is open parentheses, open square bracket, close parentheses, close square bracket. That's also false because they're done in the wrong order. And finally, open curly brace, open square bracket, closed square bracket, closed curly brace. That's true. All right, so let's just quickly go over the code that lead code has given us. It's just a function called is valid, and this takes a string. Remember that the only strings that can be passed in are the ones over here that were mentioned before. What I've gone ahead and done is implemented my own stack at the bottom since JavaScript doesn't have one natively. I'm not going to go over the implementation of the stack in this video, but just know that I do have another video and a written explanation for that, and I'll link both of those down below. All right, so how do we solve this? The key is by using a stack. So what you do is you have to keep in mind the only things that will ever be added to the stack are these symbols. If you come across an open bracket, a parentheses, or an open curly brace, add that to the stack. And then what you do is if it's not one of those characters, you compare it to what's at the top of the stack. If the character on is the match for what's at the top of the stack, so let's say you have an opening, an open parentheses at the top of the stack. If the character you're on is a closing parentheses, then they match. And what you can do at that point is to pop that character off the top of the stack. And then you keep doing that, um, iterating through the entire string. And if at the very end, the stack is empty, then you have valid parentheses. So let's go over an example. Let's say you have open bracket and then open parentheses, close parentheses and close bracket. What you do is you start with the first character, which is an open bracket. Is that one of the characters up here? It is. So you add that to the stack. All right, and now you move on to the next character, which is an open parentheses. Is that an opening character? Yes, it is. So you add that to the, stop of the, to the top of the stack. All right, next character. Is that an opening character? It's not. So what you do is you take that character and you compare it to what's at the top of the stack. So does that close what's at the top of the stack? Yes, it does. So what we can do is pop that off the top of the stack. So then you move to the final character, do the same thing again. Does it match an opening character? It does not. So then you just take it and you compare it to what's at the top of the stack. Does it close what's at the top of the stack? Yes, it does. So then you just pop it off. And after you're done iterating over every character, you just check if the stack is empty at the end. It is, so the parentheses are valid. All right, I wanna go over a couple scenarios to show you what would count as it not being valid. So let's say we have open bracket, open parentheses, and then closing curly brace. We do what we did before. Start with the first character. Is this an opening character from up here? It is, so you add it to the stack. Next character, open parentheses. Is it a valid opening character? Yes, it is. Add that to the top of the stack. Hold on, let me make that look a little better to the top of the stack. All right, then you move on to the next character. Is this 
closing curly brace. Is that a valid opening character? It's not. So what you do is you take it and you compare it to what's at the top of the stack. Does that close the symbol at the top of the stack? It does not. So this is not an example of valid parentheses. All right, so let's just do one more. Let's say we have open square braces, one more of those, and closing square braces. Let's do what we've been doing. Take the first character, see if it's a valid opening character. It is. So you add it to the top of the stack. Next character. That's another opening bracket. Does it exist up here? It does. So you add it to the top of the stack. Finally, we're at the closing bracket. Does it exist up here? No, it does not. So you just take it and you compare it to the top of the stack. Does it match it? Yes. So now that we've gone over every character in this string, is this valid? No, because we still have a character in the stack. The stack is not empty. All right, so let's start coding this out. Remember that I've created my own stack at the bottom. Okay, so what do we need to do? We know that we need to create a stack. So this will represent a stack. And that would be let stack equal a new stack. All right, what do we need to do next? Let's, for this example, create a string, so open square bracket, open parentheses, close parentheses, close square brackets. Now we're gonna have to iterate over every character in that string. So for let character of s, because s is the string that we're passing in, what do we need to do? We need to check if the character is one of the valid characters up here. So if character equals an open curly brace or the character equals open square bracket or the character equals open parentheses. Then we would, what do we need to do if it's one of those? We need to push it to the stack. So stack dot push character. And that would look something like this. All right, so what other cases could there be? We can have the case where the character is the closing form of one of those valid opening characters at the top. So else if, let's say character equals a closing curly brace, and when you check the top of the stack, it equals an opening curly brace. Then what do we need to do? All right, I know the spacing is going to look a little weird because we're on a narrow screen, but just bear with me. So if those two things are true, the character equals a closing curly brace, when at the same time the thing at the top of the stack is a, an opening curly brace, what do we need to do? We need to pop that opening curly brace off the top of the stack. Okay, so what other cases could we have? We can have the same thing except if the character is a closing parentheses. So else if the character is a closing parentheses and the thing at the top of the stack is open parentheses, And we can pop it off the top of the stack. So stack.pop. And remember, there's one more character, which is the opening square bracket. So else if the character 
is a closing square bracket. And the thing at the top of the stack is an opening square bracket. Then pop it off the top of the stack. And I just noticed that I put three ampersands here instead of two, so let's fix that. All right, so if none of these cases is true, we just return false. So return false. Let's look at the code above real quick. So it says if the character equals basically a uh, closing curly brace, a closing parentheses, or a closing bracket, then we'll just pop off what's at the top of the stack. That can only be true if there is something at the top of the stack. So if the stack is empty, we obviously can't remove what's at the top. So what we have to add to each of these else if statements is a condition that we can only do this if the stack is not empty. So let's do that in these three else if statements. If stack isn't empty here, another if stack isn't empty, and one more if stack isn't empty. All right, so let's just go over um, an example real quick. So, first things first, we are gonna be here. So we're looping over each one of the characters in the string. So it says, if the character is one of these up here, which it is, then we push it to the stack, which is what we've done. Next one. Is an opening parentheses up here? It is, so we push that to the stack. Next is a closing parentheses up here. It's not, so now we have to go to one of the other statements. So does this close the thing at the top of the stack? It does, so we'll just pop it off the top of the stack. Now we move over to the final one, closing bracket. Is the closing bracket up here? No. So does it close the thing at the top of the stack? It does. So we'll pop it off the top of the stack. So now that we've gone all the way through, we just return whether the stack is empty. And that's the answer. As I showed you before, um, the reason to do this is just in case We've gone through everything above and there's still a character left, which can happen where we'll do this example, this, this, close. We go here, add it to the stack. Here, add that to the stack. Now we're here. Does that close the thing at the top of the stack? Yes, so remove them. So now this would actually go through the for statement, come all the way down at the end, and if we just wanted to return true, we would be wrong because the stack isn't actually empty, meaning this is not valid, so we'd have to return false. So I'm just explaining to you again why at the end, instead of just return true, we have to return whether the stack is empty. All right, so this is just to show you what it would look like on a wider screen. Notice the formatting is properly aligned. All right, and I do notice that at the end of this line, I have the wrong character. It's supposed to be an opening square bracket instead of a closing square bracket. All right, so let's run the code. Looks good, and let's submit it. Open this up. All right, so it passed, and it's faster than about 37% of JavaScript submissions. All right, so as usual, remember that the code and a description is in the link below. See you next time.